Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream. Today is January 3rd, 2021, and we're going to do a reading of Solar Manatee Atom. Now, this is the first print, okay? And it's a black cover, it's from Valiant Comics from 1992, and it's got nice sheen. Hi guys right from 1992 okay and it's the first appearance of the eternal warrior and the geomancer right an important book and as far as i'm concerned and many people are concerned solar humanity atom uh, from valiant from the first launch of valiant number one to ten is considered to be one of the greatest comic book stories ever told okay and this comic book should have two stories in it one is a continuing story for solar that happened and the second part of the story is solar man of the atom alpha and omega which is sort of a 10 issue backup story that was told in solar man of the atom and what we're going to do by the way gang because this first issue is a first print and it's in really good condition and these are really hard to find in really good condition and i don't have i think i have two copies of this maybe right and i really don't want to damage this this baby up i got it in mylar um, so this book is at least a 9.6 right so i really don't want to damage this up uh even a 9.4 i just you know uh it's it's a very important book and i do have the second prints of these and I have a couple of second prints, one that I bought when the book first came out. And you know it's a second print because it's got the Roman numeral two here. So I bought this one when it first came out, right? This is a second print as well, right? But this one we ended up buying at a recent haul uh, with a whole bunch of other comic books. So what we're gonna do, because this one's more damaged up here, we're gonna read this one okay and it should be complete i hope it's complete anyway if it's not we'll crack open the second print that i have right but what we're going to do is read this book and this book is written by jim shooter okay the main story arc is written by jim shooter the art is by don pearl stan drake john dixon okay and the coloring is mike cal cavallero okay the backup story which is alpha and omega the story is Jim Shooter, Bob Layton. The pencils is Barry Windsor Smith. And the cover is done by Barry Windsor Smith as well, which is all black. It's the logo, right? So cover is Barry Windsor Smith, and he's got this little signature here. The inks is done by Bob Layton. And uh, the coloring is done by Janet Jackson. And Janet Jackson did a lot of coloring for Valiant Comics and her coloring was amazing really really stood out uh, from that period okay so let me put these guys here the tapes so they don't snag the comic let's bring this out <clears throat> okay now as far as great goes because of this pretty serious a dent in there you know you would give this like a 7.5 maybe maybe higher but the rest of it is pretty good maybe an 8.5 let's see yeah not bad not bad and it was a great haul it was a huge haul that we had and this was one of the comics in it and uh, i was very happy to have this right fantastic fantastic we're just going to get straight into the reading gang and it doesn't look like this book was even well other than this i'm fortunate about this otherwise the grade would be like a nine or something ah there's a little bit of no that's just a little scuff mark or a little bit take a look nice 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 this is beautiful yeah very very beautiful and 
I don't remember not having any writing here, a little write-up. Uh, Valiant Comics usually put the write-up at the back here. Okay. The little disclaimers that they usually had. Do they have it? No. Okay. Let's go from the beginning. Check this out. And this should be... Oh, here's a little write-up on it. Let's read the fine print here, gang. Okay, because we end up using reading the fine prints. So let's read this, and then we'll get into the story. So this is the first story on it, right? Solar Man of the Atom, Volume 1, Number 10, June 1992, ISBN 1056-3938, published by Valiant, a division of Voyager Communication Incorporated, Steve J. Uh, Masarki, Secretary, Office of Publication, 275 17th Avenue, New York, New York, 10001, copyright 1992, Voyager Communication Incorporated, Solar Man of the Atom, and all uh, other characters herein, and the distinctive likeliness, oops, likeliness thereof, which originally appeared in pub, uh, publication, originally published by Western Publishing Inc., are a trademark of Western Publishing Inc. All other characters herein and the distinctive likeliness thereof are trademark of Voyager Communications Inc. All rights reserved, printed in the USA. No similar similarity between any of the names, characters, persons, and or institutions in this magazine with those of any persons living or dead or any institution is intended and any such similarity may exist is purely coincidental second printing and solar man of the atom along with so let's check this out solar man of the atom right along with magnus robot fighter and torok okay and dr mirage i believe they were originally gold key uh, comic books that were published in the 19, 19, early 1960s, really, right? I believe Magnus might have been late 1950s as well, but I think it was early 1960s. And what happened was Valiant Comics, Voyager Communication, right, with Jim Shooter, they licensed the rights for Solar and Magnus and Turok. And Magnus was the first superhero comic book that Valiant Comics put out, with Solar being like a month behind, a uh, month or two behind, right? So, so Magnus and Solar were the first two superhero comic books that Valiant Comics put out. And Valiant Comics introduced their first original character, okay, superhero character in Magnus Robot Fighter number five with Rai, uh, with uh, uh, Magnus Robot Fighter number five and the backup story with Rai number one and Rai was really the original valiant created superhero character they introduced and we've done a reading of that comic okay with the valiant relaunch there was a lot of people that were hoping that solar and magnus and turok would be part of that universe but valiant lost the rights to those to publish to use those characters and it reverted back to uh, the original copyright holders and they gave the rights to um, Dynamite I, I believe was publishing some of the comic books and uh, I believe another company got involved as well that were publishing Solar and Magnus comic books and Turok as well but I believe it was Dynamite that uh, got the rights for it okay aside from that gang there should be two stories here let's make sure there is okay I'm just going to flip this because I don't want to give any spoilers away. And here's the Alpha and Omega story arc. Okay. The final panel for Alpha and Omega has been published in 10 sections. Yeah. So let's do this reading gang. <clears throat> Solar. Man of the Atom. The man who killed the world. Brooklyn, New York. T. 
Tuesday, February 19th, 1985. Public School number 115. You aren't much, but you'll do. Come, pup. Huh? Me? The kid says. unique coloring style art style to valiant comics from the 1990s beautiful work zoom in and read the text let's take a look you talk English right isn't that what I'm talking now yes I think so you understand get up pup time to walk about with this old man learn the songs hear the whispers come runt of little little time left and miles to go as the poet said before i sleep my mom says don't talk to strangers the kid says really frightened stranger my dear pup what's your name Jeffrey the kid says of course I'm not a stranger Jeffrey I'm your uncle Buck we're family now come on but my books the kid says full of ignorance even the bag says stupid things come what does the bag say? We don't know. This is made of nightmares for a parent. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, where are you? kids back Jeffrey Mother. Oh, on the milk carton Wednesday February 19th 1986 so this is a year later Mr. Kor Koran, isn't that the Micheni boy? Missing Jeffrey Mc McHenry. McHenry boy. There he is. So a year later, I believe so anyway. Where is he? Let's focus. What's that he's got in his hand? So 1986, was it 19? Yeah, 1980, 1985. So one day, one year from the day of. So it was February 19th, 1985. And February 19th, 1986. So a year later, he pops up. The McHenry home, March 1st, 1986. 
So the principal says Jeffrey can rejoin his class on Monday. He did so well on the tests. G. He used to struggle with school. Not anymore. The books are full of ignorance. But they tell me the answers the teachers want. Hey, Mom, your ring is calling. You hear it? Oh, honey, I think it came off while I was doing dishes this morning. It's probably in the pipe under the sink. Don't worry, Daddy will get it later. No, it slipped off while you were drying your hands and rolled, rolled over here. Here it is. The kid found it. You were at, you were at school when I did this, did the dishes. How did you know? The mother asks. It was missing your finger. It likes the warm warmness. Jeffrey says. Don't you hear it? He asks. The McHenry home, September 27, 1990, 10.32 p.m. Save the whales. Whoa, man. All of a sudden, something's wrong. Everything in the world, in the whole world, is screaming at me. So this is Jeffrey again. Yeah. Jeff, what's the matter? The parents run in. Kids are freaking out. sun demon the sun demon has come into the world everything is afraid he says all the whispers raised to a shout all the voices screaming so loud they hurt oh man jeff you can hear a pin drop in here they don't know what's going on October 1st, 1990, 11.01 p.m. Ah, the earth is burning. It's going to burn up, he says. No, no, it hurts. Here we go again, probably the sun demon acting up. Oh, Dennis. Don't be hard on him. I've had enough of this, Bev. He's going to the doctor in the morning. The parents don't know what's going on. 9, 10 a.m. They're sitting in the doctor's office. Anxiety attacks aren't unusual in children who have suffered an emotional trauma like a kidnapping. I told you, I wasn't kidnapped. I went walk, walk about with my Uncle Buck. Doctor, his great Uncle Buck disappeared in 1912 when he was 50 years old. Yes, well, I'm sure it's just a, it's just a phase, the doctor says. So there was an Uncle Buck. 1912 uncle buck disappeared when he was 50 years old
Erasmus Hall High School, Brooklyn, April 15, 1991, 1 15 p.m. Oh, oh no. Do you think he stubbed his toe or is he hearing voices again? The other kid talks about Jeff. Maybe he's got a got an invisible Walkman. Huh. High school making fun of the kid. Ah ah He's killing the world. He's killing the world. You crazy mother. He's freaking out, flipping over the tables. Now what? Make Henry settle down. Oh wow. Flip the two that were talking about him. Ow. Just freaking out. Kings County Hospital Psychiatric Department, April 17, 1991, 11.04 a.m. And I think the key is to get him to open up about what happened to him during the abduction. He's never told us anything, doctor, the parents say, except that nonsense about being with Uncle Buck. Section B. It must have been horrible. We should have done something sooner. The minute he started talking about hearing voices, the mother says. Near Boulevard, Missouri, March 31st, 1992, Harbinger Foundation. This is the Harbinger Foundation building. It's uh, just a side note. It's one of the key uh, institutions in the Valiant universe connected with uh, the Harbinger books. Okay. Sergeant Abrams, is that you? Joe uh, Nicoletti, right. I haven't seen you since K H E Sa Kanasa. What are you? What are you doing here? I work here. I'm the head trainer for the Egg Breakers. Congratulations. The guy in the suit says. Is that them on the track? Yes, sir. Swallow, ghost, show this man what you can do. They're training them. They're psyots, they're like superpower kids. Mr. Nicolette, Nicolette, Nicoletti wants a show. Do a mock assault over and under. Okay, Rock. Great kids. They had a tough mission about three weeks ago. Nasty fight against a group of renegades. They did well, got one of them, came back a little nicked but had to start per, uh, prepping right away for an even tougher job. And I'm going to give you a little background on this. The renegades that they're talking about are the Harbinger kids uh, from the Harbinger comics. Okay. And they're uh, basically psyot superpower kids that got together that are fighting against the Harbinger foundation. And the Harbinger foundation is, uh, governed by a very powerful psyot superhero that is putting together a whole bunch of uh, people that are super powered okay a 
and Mr. Harada is the owner of the Harbinger Foundation. Okay, and he made his first appearance in Solar Man of the Atom number 10. So I'm just filling in little gaps here and there without giving too much spoilers, right? The captain continues, Mr. Harada sending them after Dr. Solar. That's probably why he wants to see me. Whoop, got ya. Uh, hey, how did you know I was behind you? The kid appears behind them. He's all naked. Always remember, if your enemy isn't where he's supposed to be, look where he isn't supposed to be. Haha. <laughs> Listen to him, kids. Listening to Mr. Abrams got me through Nam alive. You know, Gil, you don't look a day older. I mean it, the captain says. And gang, I'm just going to let you know what's going on right now. This person that you see here right now in the suit is the eternal warrior and the story there is grand and this is his first appearance okay and this kid here is the geomancer and that's his first appearance and both of these characters are huge in the valiant universe The office of Toyo Harada. Thank you for coming so quickly, Gilad. Have you seen today's paper? What does the paper say? Muskaki Mus Mus Muskaji Massacre. Fifty one slain by unexplained fiery phenomenon. Fiery phenomenon. Yes, you think that's Dr. Solar. Solar was responsible. Gilad says I'm certain of it Harada says I've had several encounters with him he's an uncontrollable force a threat to the entire world last time I entered his mind and glean gleaned a few shreds of information he he lives in Muskogee Muskogee okay and Toyo Harada is one of the most powerful psyops on earth. Uh, sort of if you follow the X-Men, sort of on X, uh, Professor Xavier level, but more powerful. Okay. I plan to search him out and destroy him. I saw your egg breakers working out. I'd like to be there when they hit, when they hit him, Gilad says. I was hoping you would say that, Gilad. The egg breakers are fine young people, but they are children. Glad to help, Toyo. Gilad replies. Hmm. Is this the latest list of prospects? May I take a look? Of course, he says. Let's see who's on this list. Interesting. Do you get a lot of Harbinger kids from psychiatric hospitals? Yes, we monitor every major institution in the world. Many class A's are emotionally disturbed before we help them. Let's see who's on the list here. Bulls Greg. Evidence abilities to predict future events and trends under investigation current residence uh, Tampa Arizona Tempe Arizona Klozak Kenneth claims to have mute mutant ability to mineralize memorize printed matter investigated negative current residence with Woodville State Mental Institution Squirrel Town Township Pennsylvania McHenry J Jeff and that's the kid McHenry Jeff claims to hear voices from inanimate objects has evidence on canny has has 
evidenced uncanny ability to find lost items and discern historical information relating to an object merely by touching it under investigation current residents kings county hospital psychiatric building and this is who we've been reading about the first few pages right jeff mchen mchenry This McHenry boy, I don't think he's a harbinger, and I don't think he belongs in an institutions. I better uh, get him out of there. I suspect he's related to an old friend of mine, Buck McHenry. Oh, Buck, that must be the uncle. Perhaps I can help. We can provide you documents, Toya says. Thanks, Gilad replies. Mr. Bolt, Mr. Abrams will be needing some credentials made up. Yes, sir, the secretary replies. Mercy, Mercy Hospital of Muskogee, Oklahoma. And that's solar right there. Dr. Pierce, oh, Dr. Pierce. And this is another major character from the Valiant Universe. Dr. Pierce, I hope I'm not disturbing you. We need to talk. Get out, Selinsky. Okay. Not until I've had, had my say, Solar replies. What are you, Selinsky? How can you do things you do? Pierce asks. I'm pure energy, Pierce. I was transformed inside the re uh, reactor during the accident. And so were you. I told you before. For some reason, you're repressing your true nature, simulating human psychology. I do that myself sometimes. And solar transforms itself to a human form, right? Pierce. Pierce, I came here to warn you that people like us can cause a lot of trouble. It's important to keep all this secret. Or what? You'll kill me like you killed my baby? Pierce says. Your baby had power like ours, but no ability to control or repress. She killed scores of innocent people, Pierce. When she ran out of energy, I couldn't save her. Pierce, don't you see? Powers like ours is dangerous. We have to be careful and discreet. Pierce. what's that light shining there oh that's solar coming out of the hospital just finished talking with Pierce right he's energy he's just pure energy I did my best to reason with with her John but she just sat there and stared it was a big mistake letting Pierce find out about you, Phil. She was inside the containment with me when this started with when this all started. She must have known all along, he says. But if she hasn't, but if she hadn't gotten pregnant, if she hadn't given birth, 
to an infant infant terrible maybe she would have kept repressing her knowledge the way she's repressing her power maybe but you never should have let her see see you use your power as phil uh Selensky. you have the red suit for a reason remember you're right he says so solar just revealed his identity to pierce look i don't mean to come down on you phil but you know from first-hand experience how much trouble you can cause if people find out about you i'm worried about the trouble trouble pierce might cause all by herself if she ever releases all that pent-up power and rage solar replies here's jeff nursing station kings county hospital psychiatric building april 1st 1992 9 40 a.m everything seems to be here dr abrams all you have to do is sign the release form certainly so he's got fake papers gilad made up by the harbinger foundation right certainly you're being transferred jeff we're going to miss you pal you're lying jeff says he hears everything from the earth right the guide wizard to comics june jammers wizard comics copy of issue 10 will come out and wizard comics was really good price guide a lot of articles great for uh collecting comics All right super fun read let's continue with the story outside you're not really a doctor are you jeff asks no but i'm on your side jeff get in what's this oh that's uh, eternal warriors glove you know what it is you know all about it jeff you can read it like a book And now that you hear it whispering, you know all about me, don't you? Jeff, here's the story of Eternal Warriors history, really. You're as old as the hills, a zillion years, Jeff says. Not quite, but I've been around a long time. I knew your great uncle Buck he was a good man Gilad says you were too young you were too young when he passed his gift on to you he must have this uh, he must have been desperate to find a successor he was a geomancer Jeff the keeper of an ancient lore and power and now you are I knew I wasn't psycho, Jeff says. Your name's Gilad Anipada. Gilad will do, he says. Look, if I'm not crazy, then man, the world's in trouble. I keep I keep it keeps whispering about the end coming soon. It even screams a few times, Jeff says. Jeff I've known dozens of geomancers over the thousands of years. They all say that. Maybe it's the world. You mean the planet cycle? Jeff replies. Maybe just nervous, Jeff. I'll give you my de uh, beeper number in case you ever need my help. I've got something important to get back to. Just drop me anywhere. I want to walk about. A while I got lots to think about Jeff says Manhattan 1151 a.m. 
So Jeff's just walking around. 1.04 p.m. Wow, so he's been walking around for like over like 14 hours about. Hmm, getting good reception, he asks. <laughs> He's just put his head on the, <laughs> head on the steps. <laughs> Funny. Cracking the joke the guy is. My name's Odeb, Odaib. Your friends call you OD because you drink a lot. The sun demon was here, wasn't he? What is the sun demon? How do you know my name? Are you a mind reader? The guy asks. No, but things talk to me, Jeff says. Me too, sun demon. You must mean Saul. He's, he's no demon though. He kept us warm one night. He isn't a demon. He's a cannibal. You know, like that movie? He went to Moscogee. I wonder if there's uh, there's anybody left there. Give all old soul Saul our best. Hey, what's your name, boy? Jeffrey. By the way, there's a twenty dollar bill inside the lining of your jacket od it must have slipped through the hole in the pocket long time ago it wants to buy you all some food bye it takes off april 3rd 1992 6 14 p.m the sign said Moskoki exit four and five downtown so there he goes so that was April 1st so it took him three days to get to here I believe or two days was it April 1st yeah April 1st here it said right so it took him a couple of days to get to Muskogee by himself he's just hitchhiking he just got off a truck right restaurant table Vol volaire 8 41 p.m couple just sitting there having dinner The lady says this wine is this wine is very nice not that I'm an expert I rarely drink is something wrong Phil no I just had to have that deja vu feeling it ha it happens to me all the time Gail since you've seen me do some fantastic things I'm sure you have some questions in your mind about me well what is it like being Superman? <laughs> Gail says, and this is Solar, by the way. And Gail is his sort of girlfriend, I believe, if I recall correctly. It's more exciting than I like, actually, Solar says, or Phil, when he's not walking around the Solar. Solar, man of the atom, alpha and omega, part 10. 
the man who killed the world continues after the special insert let's read this okay let's read this and by the way gang i'm going to give you a little one more little uh, tangent jeff the geomancer uh the relaunch of valiant they released a four issue miniseries uh at the same time they were doing book of death uh a death of harbinger and a, basically they released uh, 12 issues four issues of book of death four issues of book of death harbinger exo solar not solar uh ninjak and uh, bloodshot and they released four issues called ledgers legends of the geomancer okay legends of the geomancer right which tells the origin and this is the second relaunch of valiant comics in 2012 right so 20 years after the fact they released a four issue story arc which is called legends of the geomancer which was a special offering when people when retailers order a certain number of books of book of death and stuff like this and valiant comics said they were never going to release reprint those issues again and we did a reading of four all four of those issues which gets into the origin of gilad eternal warrior right get it gets into the origin of eternal warrior and the geomancer and eternal warriors brothers and it is a fantastic read and we ended up reading the full four issues if you're interested in knowing what this is all about okay it's a reimagination of it but it stays true to the original story arc okay let's continue let's just read this little insert since we're having a break solar manatee adam the origin of solar solar manatee adam was conceived by bob layton and jim shooter it was developed by developed by writer jim shooter and pencils artist storytelling by barry windsor smith inked by bob layton colored by janet jackson and lettered by jade each of the first 10 uh, issues of solar man of the atom will contain a free pull out insert like the one following this page i guess we don't have that here okay so that part is missing uh, looks like it like the one following this page presenting one chapter of the origin plus a section of the lar largest single comic panel ever created this panel uh, measuring a huge 26 and a half inches by 51 and a quarter inches fully assembled depicts the incredible climax of alpha and omega in both form and substance this story is unique an event that will make an inc in in the in the liable mark in the history of the comic medium a milestone in the new era of excellence introduced by valiant in previous chapters dr philip Selensky was transformed by thermal nuclear accident into a godlike godlike being of pure energy with the loss of his humanity however came a deep and compelling awareness of the value of human human things his godlike nature drove him to become a force in the world but he also found himself driven to regain the humanity he had abandoned he fell in love ultimately he has been forced to make difficult choices now he must face the grim consequences of the choices he made okay now is the insert We're going to pause this here we're going to crack open the second print that i have here okay and let's see if 
the insert is in this that they're talking about. I hope that's okay, gang. We're doing a little pause of the story. I just want to make sure this isn't the insert. Let's check it out. I'm on, we might do a comparison with the, uh, the first print. I hope you like the sound of the rain. And this is an unread copy, by the way, gang. I can't remember which issue I read. Let's take a look. Oh, it's not here either. I think this is the insert. This is it. But what we'll end up doing, we're gonna crack open the first print just to make sure there's no little insert valiant comics used to do this they put the inserts in there just a little thing they used to put in right if not we're just going to continue on with the reading we must do this is these readings are also part of doing a historical look at things, right? This guy I would grade at, uh, oh, look at this, the black is having a hard time focusing on this. Let's move this away and see. Let's see if this is gonna focus. So the grade on this one is probably a 9.4, wow, let's see. Yeah, maybe a 9.4, 9.2. Okay, cool. So there's no extra insert in this either. So this second print is complete. Yeah, so let's do this. Let's continue reading this. Apologies for the tangent, but I have to make sure. Okay. So, let's see what we got here. Continues after the special insert. So, we're going to read which is weird, they don't say pause. We're gonna start reading this one to see if it's a continuation of the story or, so this is a side story, I believe, that we're about to get into. Let's read this, possibly, or it could be the last one, or it could be a continuation. Right. Let's check it out. Okay, once more from the top, huh? Gail, could you stand to see me just for 10 minutes? Nah. Gail, look, I'm sorry about that, huh? Blah. So this is definitely not continuing from this. Okay, from here. So right now we're reading a special which goes into here. Okay, we're not going to give any spoilers. We're just going to keep on reading. Okay. So this is a different time zone, time uh, line. Okay. Let's read that again. Okay. Once more from the top, huh? Gail, could you stand to see me just for 10 minutes? Nah. Gail, look, I'm sorry about that, I blah. So he's thinking to himself, Solar, trying to talk to Gail. Better just go ahead and call before I talk myself out of it. So this is Gail sitting in a hotel room, looks like it. Right. Hello, Phil? Oh, God, 
it's good to hear your voice again busy no I was just writing a letter how are you Gail says or asks I'm fine Gail I'm sorry that I I mean could you stand to see me for a minute that would be wonderful it's been three months I've missed you so much Gail says good great I'm across the street I'll be right there solar replies Phil I'm under surveillance maybe you shouldn't Phil Phil he hung up or he just dropped the phone he's not hearing her how did I find you I borrowed I stole a letter you wrote out of your mother's mail I'm sorry I know it was wrong but Gail I was desperate I hope you'll forgive me I had to see you again please understand hmm turbine noise solar here's the noise helicopters coming right at me This will never work, Erica. Selensky's a solar inferno in human form. Your little field generators and lasers might as well be colored lights. I'll make it work, Dobson. We're locked on, Dr. Pierce. So this is the, the lady that Solar went into the hospital to talk to over here. that's her right there okay so she's got a sort of a her group of people she's working with right we're locked on dr pierce that's close enough fire And that's one thing with uh, the early Valiant comics. They didn't really do sound effects, which was sort of cool. Right. Left it to your imagination. Ah. Solar is being hit. Got him, Dr. Pierce. Stay with it. 2DTO. They're hurting solar. Probably one of the few times the solar has been hurt. Pierce can only be Pierce. Solar realizes what's going on. We're killing him. Colored lights, huh? Dobson, I told you anything can be done. It's all a matter of moving energy, she says. Oh, look 
at that. He's in serious pain. What's the matter, Dobson? Squeamish? Stop, stop this now. Sir, Selinski is coming towards us. Dr. Pierce. Dr. Pierce, Dr. Pierce, do something. Oh. Miss Nordham, you'll have to come with us. What's going on out there? What are you doing to him? Gail says. She's so lawyers girlfriend love really the one person that solar loves outside air is getting hot dr pierce all all my temp indicators are pegged losing oil pressure hold your position pilot my gauges say he's losing losing incorporation stay on him Get him. Phil, I never wanted it to come to this. I'm sorry. You're doing something to him. So this guy must have been a Solar's friend, right? Remember, this is part 10 of a story arc we're reading. Another few seconds. This bird's going down, the pilot says. Hold your position. Keep firing, Pierce says. For the love of God, Erica. Oh, look at that. He's just being drained. Look. Where solar was. Computers having a hard time focusing on that one. Look. He's gone. Dead. Are you sure? Dobson? Take a look at the instruments. No reading at all. before read them Selinsky's dead let's pack up pack up the murder weapon and go home shall we I'd like to I'd like to be sick in a sick in private he was a friend he says He was a monster, Pierce says. Then I'm su surprised you two didn't hit it off, Erica. Oh, he doesn't like her. Now I insist that you land immediately. The witch hunt is over. Dr. Pierce, you're picking up a massive energy flux at the edge. They're picking up a massive energy flux at the edge. It's him. It's him. You knew he was manipulating our readings, didn't you, Dobson? Well, he's not getting away. After him, pilot, hurry, Pierce said.
there's the energy signature. Oh, is that a nuclear reactor right there? Oh my. forgot what it was like to feel tired solar says look at that it's just drifting it'd be so easy to close my eyes and sleep wish i could sleep he says but i have to see gail again I have to going into the nuclear site starving come on open he needs the radiation oh wow look at that ah free neutrons look at that it's beautiful gone into space like so fast look at that what's he thinking need more energy lots more more than peers could possibly move this should be far enough away what's he doing should be able to open a wormhole without the earth being sucked in. Wow, it's crack, cracking open a wormhole. this is the insert that you put together with all the 10 pages from solar humanity Adam 1 to 10 that makes a gigantic picture and take a look at this there's people flying into the wormhole right. or flying out of it who are they perfect a name, nameless star oh he just opened up a wormhole and went to a, another solar system right let's check it out perfect a nameless star just pure energy nobody's using it no one will miss it solar things look at that he's sucking in all the energy from the star 
delicious. Suck the star dry. If there was no God before, I'm coming, Gail. I'll be right there, and nothing's going to stand between us this time. So are things. are still circling and get that civilian aircraft out of this area one of the pilots or commanders in the helicopter says the red guy Solar. Why did you bring me here? You people are using me as bait, aren't you? I don't know, miss, the agent says. Dr. Pierce, I saw it. We know where he's going. Move in and lock on. Who's out there? The agent pulls out a gun. Psst. Oh, he's coming through the... Check this out. He's coming through the... The switch there. Right? Psst. My God. Yes, I am, Solar says. <laughs> Indeed. I'll kill you if you don't leave now. Yes, yes, I'll go, I'll go, the agent says. Gail, is something wrong? You don't look very happy to see me. Phil, I can't see you with the light. Oh, he just realizes how bright he is. There, better? Yes, but you better get away from here. They're trying to trap you. Everything's okay, Gail, Solar says. And I'm never leaving you again. Oh, Phil, I love you. Ah, they're so happy. He's like butt naked. He's just kissing him. He's kissing him all over. Oh no. Oh, that's a beautiful panel. What an embrace, what a kiss.
will go away start a new life somewhere I'll have so much power now they won't dare trouble us no Phil they'll never stop trying to kill you I I'd be your I'd be your Achilles heel they'll use me to get to get at you I couldn't bear it or bear that Gail says Dr. Pierce before we lock on check out these readings on your instruments radiation energy levels what is it the scientist asks Selensky's way off the scale all of them I'm a good soldier man I'll do as ordered but are you sure you want to risk getting him mad Gail if you don't come with me they'll keep you prisoner and they'll use you against me anyway please Solar says I'll go with you I'll go with you Gail says I want to be with you no matter what Phil suddenly I don't feel so well dizzy the room spinning phil what's happening to me i'm killing you radiation's brimming over it's bad as bad as it can be solar's thinking What's he doing? Shifting to mass? All that energy? Oh, there's a little panel. We gotta read here. What does that say? Draw it in before, like before. Zero radiation. Hurry. Oh, so he's emitting massive radiation. He's pure energy, so he's converting his energy into mass. What's he doing? Shifting to mass? All that energy? That's what Pierce says. Oh, look at this. The pilot's head just exploded, I think. Look at that. And this guy's in trouble too. Right. Pierce is not. She's energy as well. No. Gail's dead. We all are. I'm losing it. Too much power. Can't get control. So unfair. I play dice with the gods, and everyone loses. Everyone else loses. I wish this world stop. I wish this would stop. He thinks. Right. And that's the final page of Alpha and Omega. The final panel of Alpha and Omega has been published in 10 sections, one in each chapter. To view the final panel, one issue 
uh, open issues uh, 1 through 10 of solar man of the atom to the center spread and assemble them to form the Omega panel the largest comic panel ever created the Omega panel includes Alpha and Omega which is the prologue to solar man of the atom series the story entitled no place like home which appeared in issue number one begins shortly after events of Alpha and Omega the cover of this issue is the symbolic uh, bridge between the two stories the utter blackness experienced by Selinsky as he destroyed his own world and entered a new one ours Wow so this is panel is in tribute to Alpha and Omega which is what is happening here this is the panel and that's why we see the people fly in so what we would need to do is open up all 10 issues of solar man of the atom put them together and we see we would see the gigantic spread uh, splash page but it's more than a splash page it's 10 issue splash page of solar man of the atom destroying his universe and entering ours right cool we need to find that panel online okay now let's continue with the dinner that solar and gale were having right because that starts off so that left off from here right and this alpha and omega this story arc was penciled by barry windsor smith okay this we go to here so let's read this little last one well what's it like being superman gail asks right if you remember what's it like being superman gail asks it's more exciting than i like actually solar replies and we're going to finish off this story okay it's all very hard to believe phil does anyone else know just a friend of mine named john Virhassen and dr pierce she worries me solar replies phil during all that chaos monday with dr pierce you said we were lovers in another life were you being poetic i hope so this is our universe now right that he's entered no gail that's the reason i know i can trust you it's difficult for me to tell tell the story it ends in horror but you have a right to know solar replies you you're the sun demon oh the sun demon is solar you you're the sun demon jeff points to solar you're the man you're the man who killed the world basta be quiet you out of my restaurant the waiter says oh are you doing that pierce asks shh solar says good grief watch where you're going sport he almost hits the guy yeah mister do you have a quarter i have to call someone this is when pay phones were around gail i'd better go waiter check please i'll get it phil go ahead 
que é Alsace. Oh, what 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 was that? Fireworks? Looked like somebody launched a rocket. I saw a man on the steps, but he's gone. The bystanders. Two miles south, 9.04 p.m. Oh, these are the egg breakers. Check it out. Check it out. And that's Gilad right there, right? That's Gilad right there. And those are the egg breakers from the Harbinger Foundation. Okay. All right. You all know the game plan. Let's relax, focus, and get ourselves mentally prepared. The call could come anytime, so let's be ready. What are the odds of finding this doc Dr. Solar tonight? That's Gilad asking. Who knows? We've got over a thousand spotters deployed around the city, concentrating on the locals. Uh, locals, Mr. Harada picked up, picked out of his mind. The nuke plant, locales, uh, Mr. Harada picked out of his mind. The nuke plant, a restaurant, a shopping center. If we don't get him tonight, we'll keep at it until we do. Can you stick with us? All right, by all right by me, Joe. I've got lots of time. Gilad says he's like the eternal warrior, right? He's thousands of years old. Hmm, my beeper. Need a phone? No, thanks. I have one in my saddle pack. Hello? Eternal Warrior says. Jeff. Jeffrey. Hey, calm down. What's the matter? He asks. The sun demon threw you out of the restaurant? Well, I'm tied up now. No, it's not that I don't believe you, but Jeff. I can't come right now. Where are you anyway? Gilad asks. Oh, Brerwood Street in Muskogee, Oklahoma, near Voler Restaurant. Please, Mr. Gilad, he might be coming after. Oh, after me. And solar hangs up the payphone, right? Problems, Gil? I'm not sure. I'll probably be right back, Gilad says. Because they're in Muskoki too, right? Joe, what's the name of the restaurant Harada saw in Dr. Solar's mind? Voler, why? Just curious, Gilad says. Oh, he knows where he's going. Son, I think, I think you and I should have a talk. That suit doesn't fool me. I know who you are. Let go. Okay, but settle down and tell me what you mean about me killing the earth last april 15 you you ate the whole world it's true isn't it i lost control of my energy i generated a black hole that consumed everything but why is the world still here gilad asks
I don't know. After it was over, I woke up. The world was still intact. But the time was different. It was before the event. I lived through those last days again. And this time, I didn't let it happen. Now, how did you know about what happened? I heard the screams, Jeffrey says. And here comes the eternal warrior. Dr. Solar. I will never doubt the word of a geomancer again, Gilad says. Seriously. And he's the eternal warrior, is a protector of the earth and protector of the geomancers. Right. Hello. Beach Party Central. This is Penny and Sky. Do you copy? Beach Party Central. How's the weather? Hot and sunny. Repeat, hot and sunny. And these are the people that are watching in the car. Keep an eye out for the Harada Foundation. Oh, for the Harbinger Foundation, right? The Guru dudes already making the scene the rest of the surfers are on their way the guru dude haha the the two watchers the guru dude they're referring to eternal warrior right right there so it's all their code talk right so the guru dudes already making the scene the rest of the surfers are on their way the beach umbrella is going up in mark 78 seconds so split now and other sub uh, sun spotters in the in the venice beach area toady and Muldoon, ricky and lucy topper timmy and lassie well hurry home before you get sunburned Oh, they're about to launch an attack right here not a good idea not a good idea eternal warrior what is he saying first give me the boy you know this guy yeah he's a friend Jeff says okay then go on over by him solar is like not really afraid of anything you know i was prepared for any move you might have made except that sorry who are you gilad solar please to meet you Mr. Gillat, I don't think he's the problem. I'm really sure now. Let's see what Jeff is saying. I'm really sure now that there's another sun demon around. That's the real trouble. A minute ago, I swore I'd never doubt you again, but another one like him god asks hey that's strange all of a sudden there's no ambient energy flow it's as if someone dropped a six foot thick lead roof over us yeah i feel something strange too like the voice of the world is muffled there's no wind either i'm going to go take a look hmm the beach umbrella gilad knows what's going on maybe i think he does amazing there's a space-time shear plane walling in the area how can that be 
Solar says. Look at that, it's like a box, like a cube, right? And here's a cube here, right? They just dropped a three dimensional cube on them. We seem to be enclosed in a big, impenetrable, impenetrable box. It lets a little light pass through and not much else. You guys wouldn't know anything about that, would you, Gilad? Yes, I know about it, he says. Oh. oh, I see. I bet you know a man named Harada Gilad. Just a guess. Haha. <laughs> and that's the egg breakers coming up against Solar. And we got written by Jim Shooter, pencils David D. Perlin, inker Stan Drake and John Dixon with Paul Otto, colorist Mike Cavallero, letterer Joe Al Albello, editor Bob Layton. And that's for the main story. The other one was uh, the Alpha and Omega was Jim Shooter, Bob Layton, Barry Windsor Smith. Uh, and Janet Jackson right and this is eternal warrior number 11 which is the second appearance I believe it should be the second appearance of eternal warrior right awesome valiant we're building a universe and they weren't kidding right and then you had Jim Shooter writing uh, you know just a little message to people should we read this let's read this we need some advice from you collectors here's the situation dealers are asking us to reprint harbinger number one exo man of war number one and shadow man number one we're told that there is so much demand for these issues and back issue prices are so high that the many val new valiant readers can't find copies or can't afford them if they do find them People simply want to read the read those comics. So what do we do? Here are two choices. A reprint those issues as they originally appeared with only a small second edition no, notation on the cover. B reprint those issues with new covers so that they are easily distinguishable from the originals. If people want to read our books, we'd like to make them available. However, we don't want to do it in a way that damages the value of the original first issues because many people out there are care about the value of comics as collectibles we also don't want anyone to think we're pulling a scam trying to make people buy the same book twice by printing a second version drop me a line and tell me what you think we should do a or b and something else entirely and now a special announcement from Valiant Sales Tweezer John Hartz, right? And right now, there was a lot of second printings of titles done in the 90s and pre-90s with just putting a second print, like this is a second printing, has the same cover except the number two, right? Has a second printing just noted here, right? second printing but modern age comics more recent comics they're putting out brand new covers right and this one doesn't have a barcode on it but with the barcode the last number if you see a two a one means a first print in general a two means a second print three means a third print four means a fourth print right so on barcodes of modern day comics recent day comics this is considered modern but recent day comics the last number in the barcode tells you what print it is right and that's a fantastic read i hope you guys liked it and this is unity which unity begins a couple of issues after this issue finishes up right two or three issues and unity began and this was a huge event 
ran for 18 issues and is considered to be one of the greatest crossovers in comic book history and well worth the read and very much i'm giving you a little bit of history very much related to to pierce the this lady right here right dr pierce and related to solar and the whole valiant universe okay and that's solar man of the atom number 10 a very very important key issue